Few things make me more sad than the thought of wasted beer. Thankfully, in the craft beer haven of San Diego, California, expired beer is getting a second life. Rather than messing with grain bills and mashing, this crafty little distillery is distilling the already brewed alcohol from your favorite IPAs, stouts, and lagers destined for the drain and turning it into gin, vodka, and whiskey. Let's check out Rebrew Spirits. I'm Jeff. I retired from the military, sold everything I own, and now I'm traveling around the world to learn from brewers, winemakers, distillers, and tell their story. This is my journey of beer, wine, and spirits. I went down to the Barrio Logan neighborhood on a patch known as the Acre of Awesome to meet with Rebrews distiller, Neil Lutz, and learn all about their process. You are doing something that is you know, really cool for you know, beer, you know, an expired beer, because usually normally, you know, that's either getting dumped, like I said, Absolutely. you know, unfortunately that's, the drain, yeah. that's the case. What's great about your company is that you take this expired beer and you turn it into quality products. Yeah. Here's what's really cool to me is, is that the starches, converting starches into sugar and all that stuff that other distilleries have to do. That is the, I mean. You don't have to do that. No, they've done it for us and we're just basically taking that alcohol and extracting it out. Mm -hmm. So it cuts down on a lot of like overhead basically. You know, really having, you know, um, mash tun and a boiler and stuff like that. I mean, there's a lot of infrastructure, like as you know, in like a brewery. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're pretty much just using a raw material that's ready to go. So this is the beer literally from those kegs comes into this vat here. And as yeah. you can see, it's still carbonated. Yeah. So what we don't want, just like you're opening a warm beer, mm -hmm. it explodes, it foams up. So right. basically this is just decarbonating and they're just a like holding vessel so we can fill this pot over here. You actually wait how About much? Two to three days. Two to three I mean, days. One and you, you actually want this to get oxygenated. Oh yeah, you know, no, that's like, it. you know, nobody wants DO in the brewing world, but mm -hmm. we're just, we pump oxygen into here mm -hmm. and then it takes the hops down a lot and then gives it more of that malty feel. And we do a couple other things too, but I mean, one of the things is pumping oxygen. Pumping oxygen. Yeah, and that kind of, you know, like I said, it kills the beer for consumers, but it makes it better for us. Mm -hmm. You know, 24, 48 hours, you guys tasted it. It's it's flat and stale. Flat, it's stale. The worst beer you ever won in your life. Right. And we're like, that is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so as you can imagine, I had a ton of questions, but my first one was, what's the deal with all this expired beer? Is it safe to use? Here's founder of Thorn Brewing and Neil's partner at Rebrew, Dennis O'Connor. The, the thing that a lot of people don't understand is, is beer doesn't go bad like milk, where once it hits that expiration date, uh, it would do a consumer harm, you know? The difference is, is that uh, after about 90 days, some of the flavors are just changed. And in a place where uh, hoppy beers are prevalent, it, it's most obvious in hoppy beers. Lagers, a lot of times, you could just let lager. Let sit around, the longer they sit around, the better they get. It doesn't hurt them much, but uh, hoppy beers, most retailers uh, won't buy them and most distributors won't sell them past that 90 day mark. So if something goes uh, past that date in the warehouse, you know, it ends up, it, they're supposed to deal with it. A lot of times it ends up back at the brewery and then it's a pain in the butt for the breweries because here you are hoping to get empty kegs so you could fill them and then you're ripping into a forklift or into a pallet and it's got full kegs, you have to put it aside and then find something to do with. And you know, those options when there's smaller amounts, uh, some people put them on their tasting room, not ideal. Um, some people give it away to staff or we'll take it to a festival and just give it away that way. Same thing, it's not really putting your best foot forward. Um, sadly enough, some breweries have uh, just dumped it down the drain, which you're not supposed to do. That's illegal, it's bad for the environment, could make its way to the ocean. So when you're talking about thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of gallons during this COVID thing, when all the bars and restaurants were shut down, it's a pretty big deal. How did you come up with this idea and vision of taking a, that once was a quality product that expired and turned it into another quality product? Yeah, I mean, it, it, when we were actually at the original Thorn, the, the smaller brewery in North Park, uh, we started playing with it and um, you know, Neil, our, our head distiller who you've met, um, just kind of stayed on it and kept turning the screws with it. And once we figured out that we could have a quality product made out of beer that was, you know, pretty much destined for the drain, um, 
That's when a light bulb really went off in my head and I started following the fish upstream and trying to figure out exactly how much wasted beer is in San Diego County. Uh, and you know, I spoke with other breweries, I spoke with dis uh, distributors, and kind of once, once the dust settled and I kind of did my homework, I realized that there was roughly two truckloads a month that we could get our hands on. You're talking anywhere from you know, 20 to 40,000 gallons. It's, it's significant. And so that's kind of when we went all in, you know? So we just decided, hey, we're gonna do this distillery and we're gonna make this our business model. Neil and Dennis have given San Diego breweries a great resource to offload products they can't sell. But being in a city with over 150 breweries means Rebrew is processing every type of beer under the sun. From my understanding, it's like there's so many different varieties of beer out there. Absolutely. You know, so is there a certain variety you need for your gin, for your vodka, and Absolutely. for your Absolutely, yeah, yep. no. So for starting off for a vodka, I mean, basically it's a neutral spirit. Mm -hmm. So we'll take everything. It's just throw it all together. So mm -hmm. for the gin, we really like the hoppy beers because they do have the hopness to it, which is a botanical. I like to use the really double IPAs, anything that's like really dry hopped, and so it kind of adds a little different base to it. So normally like a gin is just made from vodka, you know, just a neutral grain spirit, and that's basically just for the alcohol, and all the botanicals are added in. But us starting off with like something that already has a flavor to it, with a hop flavor, which is kind of nice, you know, hops are very aromatic and stuff. So that's, we'll generally separate that, all the hoppy beers for our gin. And then whiskey, we try and go for more of the lagers and stouts and you know less hoppy beers. Because I mean, we've done a few in there. I mean, people like them. If you like hops and you like whiskey, you would love a beer whiskey. Some people are more traditionalists and say, what is this flavor? And it's like, it's hoppy. You're like, well, it's beer whiskey. Yeah. Yeah, so definitely, we definitely, you know, look at each tank and everything. We just, we segregate them a little bit and say, hey, okay, this is gonna be for a gin run. We'll do that and like, and we never know what's coming in. So when we get a truckload in, we'll just kind of look at it and kind of divide it up the best we can. Yeah, is there something that you absolutely turn away? Like you're like, look, I cannot use there this. There is. Okay. Non-alcoholic beer. <laughs> <laughs> Love and it. And we have a few pellets of that. Don't bring me that NA stuff I'm here. Like, what, do, what do we do with this? <laughs> so it is kind of funny. So this is our uh, vodka. So as you can kind of get some notes on it, it does have a, a vodka S, but it does have like a melanie to it. And that is from the hops. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people think vodka is a mixer, which it generally is, but because it's just a neutral grain like that. So I tried to make my vodka have some flavor, being that we've used all these wonderful hops in the beer. Mm -hmm. So I tried to bring some of it through. So as you can taste, it has very smooth characteristics with the vodka, but that little flavor you're getting, that is yeah. from the hops. And I could just make it totally neutral, but I decided being from beer, I wanted to give it some of that flavor back. So it's a different ball game. It's a different spirit, but I think people enjoy it. And I think just having people drink spirits neat really like enlightens them to see like what this is. You know, if you mix it with something, you really don't get the flavor. I mean, this came from a craft beer, you know, this came from a really well organized design brewed beer. Yeah. And I, I just don't want to like throw it away to some orange juice or citrus. So yeah, so that's kind of the way these spirits are meant to be drank. Mm -hmm. And I hope you enjoy. Yeah, really good. My point of view is you, you are getting such a different variety. You know, consumers want kind of the, the similar taste, yeah. right? Every single time. When I come back and buy another bottle of gin, I want it to taste like the one I bought before. And so that's where we do? kind of differ because mm -hmm. it might be slightly different. And we don't know. I mean, it's not gonna be dramatically different, but it's, you might get some notes of this versus notes of that you got from the last one. Right. So it's kind of like why people would come back to try it again. And uh, we actually batch each one. Why would someone say, why would you batch a vodka? I go, because it could have been made out of this beer or that beer. Yeah. So like our vodka does have a batch and a bottle number on it. Huh. Just like a whiskey, wood, or even gins and stuff like that. Talking with Neil, and walking around this beautiful new distillery, it is clear that Rebrew came into the spirits game with fresh ideas and a bold vision for the future. They had me thinking, is there anything this distillery can't do? What's the endless possibilities of alcohol you can make from expired beer? I mean, you've got gin, 
you've got vodka. You even talked about a whiskey, mind blown right now. Yeah, but no, it's, it's- Like, can you make aquavit? Can you make- We're actually doing an absence right now, like, kind of like a chartreuse thing. So, I mean, once you have the base, we can take that alcohol and make basically anything out of it. Mm -hmm. There's no limit. It's just, hey, if you can think of something, try it. We even had a, um, there's a local coffee, uh, coffee company called Dark Horse. And so they did a cold brew batch and same thing, something happened with it. They asked if we could do something with it. We said, we don't know, but we want to try. And we did, we actually, we actually mixed it in with a batch that we were going to distill off uh, and it's delicious. So we don't know what we're going to call it yet, but it's going to, yeah, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be some, some hot coffee. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's in the spirit of spirits, in the spirits of beer. All the styles we know of, whether it's IPAs or stouts, you know, those were all created because of what was prevalent in the area at that time. And now because of globalization, we're able to, you know, get our, our hops from New Zealand and our, our, our grains from the Pacific Northwest. It's, it's, it's not a real sustainable thing. It's great for, for choice for the consumer, but um, what's nice about this is it couldn't be any more local. You know, we're literally sourcing trash and turning it into treasure in our own backyard. So, mm -hmm. and we've already run a, a gold for our vodka and a silver for our gin in our first international competition. And it's like, that says something. Yeah. So to people that are getting their ingredients from all over the world and, and you know, doing it business as usual, it's, it's really interesting to kind of come, come up with a new type of business model um, that, I mean, in, in a lot of ways kind of changes the game.